Eve, the Longmas Day 2. So today we're going to do a little weekly update. I'm going to talk to you about my December goals, which I already failed on one. Well, the day's not over yet, so <laughs> we'll do it tonight. I'm going to talk about um, why I'm doing the goals that I'm doing. I'm going to talk a little bit about perimenopause and menopause. I know I've been talking about it a lot, but it's right. It's kind of taken over my life right now. So I'm going to talk about some things that I found and that's kind of shaping my December goals. We're going to do our advent calendars though first, um, but we'll do a weekly update, tell you what my, my weight loss, weight gain, that kind of thing is going on. Um, I have my notes here, but let's first do our advent calendar. So we're going to do our tea one first because I have some hot water here and my gingerbread mug. I have not got all my mugs out. I was going to get my gnome mug out to match my gnome, but I was half asleep and um, could not find it. So I need to get my mugs out. We're going to do that this weekend. Okay, let's see. Day one of our tea advent calendar is feel new. Of course, I don't have my glasses, so I do have them somewhere. So I don't really know what this, if I can see what this is. Um, a clean fusion of aniseed, fennel, and cardamom. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of anise, so is that how you say that? It doesn't smell bad though, it smells pretty good. Which, it's funny that this happens to be the one because in a lot of my research with the menopause, perimenopause stuff, anise, licorice root, fennel came up a lot. So we have our hot water. We're just gonna let this sit here for a little bit while we open up the rest of our calendars here. I already had my coffee this morning because I knew I'd be having my tea. Let's go ahead and go with the new Chalk Zero Advent calendar. So day one, where are we? Why do I not see a number one? Okay, number one right here. I probably will not have, I'm not hungry, so I'm not gonna eat any of the chocolate. We'll just open it so we have it ready to go. And we have a little chocolate Santa. So this will be a nice little treat later on. Let's go ahead and put that over there. And then we'll do the other Chalk Zero one, which if I remember right, when I did the, one of these last year, the same brand, which they don't have anymore, I looked on their website, they do not have this one. They've replaced it with that new one. Um, sometimes the chocolates fall out of their little thing. They, these were not designed the best. There we go, number one's up here. Oh, these ones are in order. I don't remember them being in order last year. But yeah, sometimes they fall through. But this one is, and what I really like about these, see look how thick those are, but you know what? This does not look that great. It's possible it got too hot like in the summertime. This one may not, that we may not do this calendar because we'll see how they all kind of look a little bit discolored. I mean. The chocolate, the thing itself said it was good till February, but this is looking a little discolored. So we will open it again tomorrow, but if it looks like that, then this one may just be a bust. We'll just see, we may just, it may just be here for looks um, this year. And then our puzzle one, which I need to just leave this cover off because it is super hard to get open. So I think we'll just, we're just going to display it. I'm gonna to try to do it without that thing. Okay, we'll just, just we're just gonna display it like this. So let's just open up box number one. I will move my tripod over to my table so we can hopefully those boxes don't fall out. So we can put our puzzle together super quickly. Try to keep these from getting so I can put them back in there. Actually, I can't really do that. <laughs> do it in a way. I mean, I guess I could, but I'm not gonna know which ones are, oh, they're numbered on the back. Okay, they're numbered on the back one. So I could like gift this to somebody, you know, um, since I've already done it one year, but yeah, they're numbered on the back so you can put them back in the boxes. So that's kind of nice. It may not work out. It's really dark over here because I'm not gonna drag my light over here, but this may not work out every day because it's not the best lighting or the best setup once it starts going together, but, um, and it may take too long for me to do this on camera, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and do it, and then um, I will show you what it looks like when it's all done. I'm kinda curious if all this, like, what I'm curious about is if 
it's like a corner or if they're just random pieces that we're gonna have to put all together. This has does have some edge pieces in it. So I am kind of wondering if each box is gonna be, you know, a section and just all gonna come together. I'll be really curious about that. Um, but it is kind of dark over here. I may have to wait till it's a little bit lighter um, outside where I have some light coming in. If we have any, it's been overcast and yucky lately, so we may not actually have any. So that may not even make a difference anyway. But I feel like I'm being watched while I do this <laughs> because you guys are kind of watching me. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this together. Um, or like I said, I may just wait until it's a little bit lighter in here. My old lady eyes are a little bit hard to hard to do, but anyway, I will show it to you when we have that section all done. Hold up, I am on my way. I'm in motion. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. We can hang out on the beach without free. Isn't that amazing in Christmas times? We'll be chilling and having a good, good time. Doesn't matter if the snow is falling or the windows in the rain is pouring, it will always be Christmas in my heart. But this year, I wanna hang out with my friends and family. Yeah, the puzzle is a little bit more difficult <laughs> to do than I thought it would. It's early morning. I don't want to run out of time before I have to start work. So I want to get this part filmed and then I think I'll just run, run my um, time lapse um, and show you guys putting the, the puzzle together. So let's first kind of talk about my December goal. Well, first talk about weigh-in. So the Friday after Thanksgiving, which was last Friday, I hit my lowest that I've had since I restarted my journey in September. Um, and actually the lowest that I've had in quite a while. So I was super excited, especially coming off of a super busy, stressful week, you know, kind of, and, and after Thursday of eating, you know, I don't ever track on Thanksgiving, had dessert, had everything, and I still hit my all time low. Um, and then over this last week, even though I have been doing super good, paying attention to everything that I'm having, the one thing I have not really been doing is drinking a lot of water. Um, also have not really been tracking much because I knew I would not be filming this week, getting ready for Vlogmas and everything that I really haven't been tracking, but I have been eating the things I meal prepped, eating the thing, I mean, I'm not like deviating from any time type of schedule, but, or meal plan, but I just, it, I, but I'm also having a ton of PMS symptoms right now, which is crazy because I'm like 16 days late. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna skip my period this month because it was supposed to happen actually even longer than that. So like November 10th, I believe was the day according to my tracker I was supposed to start and here we are December 2nd, still have not had one. So I'm pretty sure I'm skipping November, but now I'm kind of like spotting a little bit, having more PMS symptoms. I don't know. Just never know what my body's going to do right now. Anyway, I am up five pounds <laughs> this week. And that's what I'm talking about, you guys. This is where I have decided to make some changes. And um, I, but changes for the good, changes for my good mental health right now. Um, so all of my goals are kind of geared towards all this research that I found on naturally helping to relieve perimenopause symptoms. Um, I have to back off from the scale right now because it's really messing with me usually I'm fine with like checking my weight, you know, several times a day, you know, I mean, several times a week, I was doing it, you know, daily on my, with the happy scale. And then I kind of, you know, when things were going really well, I decided just to kind of go down to a few times a week. And which usually is fine because I know you have these natural ups and downs, but then when you have this huge spike, it's just kind of like, okay, I, I have to quit focusing on what is happening on the scale, step back from that, look at other things that are going on that's affecting it because obviously it's not, 
necessarily what I'm eating, but maybe just situations that I could be helping to make things better and just this natural thing that's happening to my body. Now I have a doctor's appointment in February. That was as soon as they could get me in. And my hope is that I can really get a hold of all these symptoms as best as I can. I know that it's not going to be 100%. It never is. Um, but I don't want to go on any kind of hormonal replacement therapy. I'm just, I mean, just personally, I don't want to. Just things that I've read. And I just, I don't know. For me personally, I just don't want to go down that route if I don't have to. So I'm just kind of hoping to work on things naturally, which is a lot of things I can do naturally to do this. So let's first talk about my goals. Um, my goals. I want to just maintain my weight for the month of December. So um, I, I just want to, st you know, stay the course, you know, let's not have a gain. Let's not, you know, because when I ever tell myself, okay, we're stepping away from the scale right now, you know, I'm just going to weigh in once a week, but that I'm not putting a lot of weight on it. Um, I'm just going to, it's just for data. That's all I'm using it for right now and to make sure I am doing the maintaining. So, but anytime I do that, it, it's like I automatically think, okay, well, we're not paying attention to the scale. We don't care what happens. So I, things just go crazy, you know? And so I, if I have a goal of I want to maintain my weight, then I feel like we're, you know, we're still going the course. And then if I lose weight, fabulous, you know? So that's kind of my goal right now. Um, is to do that. So I, unfortunately, it'll be the five pounds heavier because I wanted to start with what my weight was today. And then, um, but so I'm pretty sure I'll have a loss this month because it is a little bit higher. So maintain weight. The thing I did not do today <laughs> was daily cycling. So I want to use my bicycle at least 30 minutes a day. Um, that kind of goes along with my, um, with the like natural, ways to you know relieve symptoms exercise is one of those so that's the reason why i'm doing that but i want to do at least 30 minutes a day longer on the days that like i don't work and i can have more time on there but i didn't do it this morning because i was so excited to get in here and do my advent calendars and stuff completely forgot about the cycling until i went in to get dressed and i was like there's my bike it's in my bedroom i saw it and i completely forgot but i could do it tonight um, and then making sure I'm taking my supplements. I have a lot of supplements, which will go through all of those that I am taking. Um, I will do a little snapshot too at the end of this video to show you all the ones I'm doing. I will link them all down below as well. Um, I get most of mine from Motivate, so I do have a 20% off discount code, so check that out. Um, and then the other thing is gonna be tracking, because I do think I need to track, because it, that, even though I'm not, going for weight loss, I just, I need to track. Um, I need to make sure that I'm hitting all the things that I need to hit. I just, I just need to make sure I'm doing it because otherwise, again, things could just go sideways. So those are my main goals. Really nothing super crazy. Um, the other one really is just kind of around making sure I'm really hitting the points of the um, things that I want to add to my diet, things that I want to add to my life um, that has to do with the the relieving menopause stuff. So again, I apologize if this kind of stuff is not, um, is not applicable to you, but I feel like as a woman, it really is. So whether you have already gone through this or you're currently in this or you are at an age where you, it's gonna happen to you at one point or another, more than likely. <laughs> so I kind of figure it is something applicable. And especially if you are not really exhibiting any symptoms, but you are having trouble losing weight, no matter what you do, you could be, and you're at that age that it could be happening, then it could be something towards this. So maybe some of these things will help you. One thing I can tell you after going through a lot of this stuff is that WW really is a great, tool for this type of stuff because a lot of these things are like zero point foods um and also i so i kind of feel like ww is like one of a really good source um or like tracking and that's why i didn't want to make sure i'm tracking because i really feel like it is such a good plan for um the way that i need to eat right now and so i'm just i'm really excited about that um, I do feel like I'm going to have to track a little bit in the Lose It app just to keep track of my protein and to make sure I'm getting enough calories, um, but we'll just see what, what have, comes from that. 
Um, so let's kind of talk about some, I've been doing just a ton of research, you guys. Oh, let's take a drink of our tea. It should be starting to steep a little bit. Mm, that has a nice, pleasant taste. I'm one that keeps my bag in because I usually put quite a bit of water, so I keep my bag in the whole time I'm drinking it. Yeah, you can't really tell the aniseed in that. So that's good. Okay, so like I said, I know I've been talking about this a lot, um, but my symptoms really have gone quickly from just mild, barely happening, um, to definitely now we're at the moderate. And then I've had a couple of extreme instances, which I'll tell you about here in a second. Um, so I decided that since I know this is one of the reasons that the scale is just doing what it's doing, um, I decided, you know, it's time to just focus on reducing my symptoms right now and just um, trying to just figure out what I can do for my body to help this process. Um, and I don't want to use supplements exclusively. I, you'll see I'm taking a lot of supplements, but I don't want to do it exclusively. I feel like you probably could for the most part, but I don't want to go down that route because I really do think this is a good way to introduce a lot of healthy stuff into my diet. Um, and I, so I just want this, you know, I want to really add more nutrient dense items to my diet. That's kind of what I was thinking. Um, so some of the symptoms that I've been having that have been kind of bad, anxiety. I have never had so much anxiety before. It, it's just been pretty extreme. Um, insomnia, now not insomnia in the sense that um, maybe it's just more sleeping problems than ins insomnia. I fall asleep fine, but I do am taking supplements to make myself fall asleep. I'm falling asleep fine, it's just I wake up and then it's really hard for me to go back to sleep. I toss and turn really restless. Um, I usually have to pick up my book, kind of read a little bit till I, you know, kind of can calm my, my mind down, but it's just mainly like my mind just like racing. It's really crazy. Um, hot flashes. So before, you know, the hot flashes I was having, which weren't very many, there was just a, you know, just, it's only happened a handful of times and they were just pretty, pretty mild to where if I was just in the kitchen cooking something or just even chopping vegetables, it wasn't even around any heat or anything. And I would just start kind of feeling a little lightheaded and my heart kind of pound a little bit and just kind of warm, starting to feel warm. And I just have to sit down, it felt fine. Now I've had two very severe ones that one of them I had just eaten, like we had just gone out to eat, so my stomach was really full. I, I was just out of nowhere, just boom. And um, I was so sick that night. I was super nauseous, which when I looked it up, that's pretty common. But I also ended up getting sick. And I think that was because I had a full stomach. But I was, and then I started getting the chills really bad, which again, is really common after a severe hot flash. I've had that happen twice now. And they were super, super severe. Like it was, it scared, it scared my husband. It scared me. I didn't I never had one like that before and then I started just googling and I was like okay this is completely normal this can this is one of those extreme ones now I, it's been I think it was about the beginning of November or so I feel like second week in November I haven't had one since so but it kind of it was very um I was thinking to myself I hope this never happens to me when I'm at work I mean it was that's that's how bad it was um, and my, I mean, just the feeling in my neck and my head and just, I was bright red. It was the weirdest feeling. Don't want that to happen again. I mean, I'm sure it will, but I don't want it to. Um, extreme mood swings. Like this has been bad. I can go from super like kind of just really kind of angry, not really angry, but just irritated, irritable, really bad. And then I'm just crying. I mean, literally in half of a second. It, I cry at everything like I mean yeah sometimes things like make when I've watched like movies and stuff you know they'll but I mean just everything TV shows Christmas movies everything it's just bad but then I'm also had this extreme irritability right now that can just turn in a second so it's just yeah just really bad um bladder issues like I just have to go all the time and sometimes it's just like really close if I get there sorry TMI um, but what I read was cause apparently when you put a um, woman goes through um, perimenopause, you um, you lose tissue apparently tissue tone down there in your bladder and so it causes um, that's what causes the urgency. And I just thought oh, I kept thinking I'm getting UTI because you guys know I get those. 
And so for me, that's what I thought it was, but nope, that's apparently it's all part of this fabulous thing that we all go through. Um, then again, skipping periods. Um, I still have a pretty bad PMS symptoms, which I don't typically have really bad ones, but definitely getting them. Ch uh, brain fog is so, so bad, so bad. Um, Short-term memory issues, which I have a pretty bad memory, but it's, but typically, um, it's gotten better over the years, but it's just been really bad. I think it's mainly the brain fog, not as much the memory, just the brain fog. Like I just can't concentrate or focus on anything. Um, then of course, weight loss issues. And then I get a little bit of heart palpitations. It's weird because a lot of these things also go along with my thyroid. So when I, I kind of feel like when I thought that I was having thyroid issues, that a lot of it could have been this as well. So that's another reason why I wanted to go to my doctor because I do think I want him to run another thyroid test even though I just had one and we got it straightened out. I wanna to talk to him about that because a lot of these symptoms, I'm like thinking those are the same things that happened to me when I thyroid was up, but not this extreme, like these are extreme, like not the skipping periods and all that, but I'm just talking about the mood swings, the brain fog, um, the heart palpitations, those are the biggest things I get with my thyroid. So I just, I kind of wonder about that. So anyway, what can we do? So let's go ahead and go through these quickly because this is going to be a long video. What can we do to to decrease some of these symptoms naturally? Because um, like I said, that's really important to do this naturally. Um, I'm going to see what I can do. So mainly the number one thing that I seem to have found was increasing your nutrient density. So eating foods rich in calcium and vitamin D, which I read, it seems like it's really hard to get these by food intake alone. Um, so taking supplements. So I've added calcium and vitamin D to my supplement regime. Calcium I just started last night. Um, Cause sunlight is your main source of vitamin D. I live in Oregon. It's the sun doesn't come out this time of year very often. When it does, it's 40 degrees outside, you know? So I don't get outside a lot. We don't get a lot of, you know, vitamin D rays here <laughs> right now. So I think vitamin D is something I do have to take. Um, so supplements to take to help with this, with, you know, one part of this adding, you know, increasing nutrient density. Omega-3s, I do take that. Calcium, and they say about 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams is what you should be taking. Um, and like I said, you can eat yogurt, you can eat cheese, you can eat all that stuff. I don't drink milk, I eat yogurt. So I know I'm definitely not getting enough calcium. There are some vegetables and stuff too that have calcium in them. Vitamin D, they say between 2,000 to 4,000 IU. The one I have is 5,000 IU. I get that one from Motivate. I get the omega-3s from Motivate. Magnesium, so magnesium is also supposed to help you sleep, so that is something I'm taking at night. Um, I cannot remember, I think it was two, 250 to 275 milligrams is what they say for magnesium. Um, and then these other two probably are ones you may not have heard of unless you've done some of the same research, and that's black cohosh and red clover, which the one menopause, the probiotic menopause supplement I take that I get from Amazon, that one has both of those in there. So that will be linked down below along with all these other ones. So those are like some of the main supplements that you could take because these are things you can't really get from food alone. You can, but it's not likely that you're gonna get the amounts that you need. And these are supposed to help really balance your hormones. I'm of course maintaining a moderate rate and this is an interesting fact. So it said there's several studies have been done and it was on like thousands and thousands of women um, that have shown that those who lost at least 10 pounds over a year were more likely to eliminate hot flashes and night sweats. So yes, so once I get through and really get myself in a good place, I, I really want to start again focusing on weight loss and I'm hoping by doing a lot of this stuff and combating these other symptoms that weight loss is gonna come naturally. That's what I'm really hoping. So that's an interesting study, isn't it? Um, avoiding trigger foods. So these are some foods that can trigger night sweats and hot flashes. So I am definitely making some changes here. Um, caffeine. So every time I had a hot flash, I was drinking a diet soda or drinking coffee. So I have what I'm gonna do, and I only had them at night. I have not had them at all during the day. So here is my, what I am doing. I am limiting my coffee to two coffees. I have one hot coffee when I'm getting ready for work, then I have my protein coffee. And that's it. That's all I'm gonna have for coffee 
as all men I have for caffeine and then I am buying caffeine free diet soda so when I do want to have a diet soda it's gonna be caffeine free I'm gonna to try to only stick to herbal teas that are caffeine free I do have some caffeinated tea right now that I want to get through but any tea I buy from here on out is gonna be caffeine free tea um, or if I do have any I'll have it try to have it during the morning and kind of ease off at the afternoon so that'll be a big change for me um, alcohol which I don't drink so that doesn't but I did want to mention that is a trigger food they say spicy food you guys know I eat a lot of spicy food so I think I'm gonna have to back down on that because I'm trying to I think one of the times that I did have one it was after we had Mexican food and the other time we did not um, but I do eat a lot of spicy foods as you guys know so I might have to back down on that and then sugary foods. So I don't eat a ton of sugary foods. I don't crave sugary foods. I crave more salty, savory foods, um, but sugary foods is one of them. So those are triggers, they say, for hot flashes and night sweats. Um, exercise regularly, they say it doesn't have to be strenuous, just some sort of exercise. And they do say to kind of combat bone loss, which also happens during perimenopause and menopause, is to do it maybe add some strength training but again they say not strenuous so i'm going to do my cycling to get the cardio and then i do have some light weights that i can do some you know some sort of strength and training which they say about two days a week um, mindful based stress reduction so the anxiety the stress the mood swings all of that they say can really be helped by doing like breathing exercises regular exercise yoga i can't do yoga um, stretching and breathing exercises so we do like this breathing exercise before some of our wellness meetings and it it's really cleansing and so I did download an app and I think it's just called I breathe and I will I will link it down below um, I haven't tried it yet I have it set up which I didn't see the the thing come up this morning no I mean I didn't turn on notifications but um, I have it set for every morning at seven o'clock to and it's like you can set it for how many intervals the, I did the default one, which is two minutes. So I'm gonna try it. I'll let you know what I think. But you may feel kind of silly doing it at first, but I think it's gonna be really helpful um, with trying to you know, center yourself the beginning in the morning. Um, so I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna really try those try those types of things. And then the exercise, they say boost your endorphins, which is makes you in a good mood. So gonna try it all, y'all. <laughs> now here are some foods that are high. So one of the things is increasing your phyoestrogens not phyoestrogens not sure how to say, how to say that but here's some foods that are high in that that they say you should increase soybean soy products which my body does not handle those very well um tofu not a fan um flax seeds sesame seeds sunflower seeds almonds walnuts so all of those are easy you can add to salads really easy to kind of add add to oatmeal um, you can add them to a lot of your things just kind of to toss in there add into your yogurt um, apples carrots pomegranates strawberries cranberries grapes all of those easy um, yams lentils alfalfa sprouts which you guys know that i love alfalfa sprouts um, as well as regular sprouts mung beans i really like mung beans um, oats, barley, and wheat germ. So those are all foods that are pretty high in that physo-estrogens. Um, foods high in iron. So they say that, you sh that if you increase your iron, it helps your heart palpitations, your hot flashes, your insomnia, and your irritability. So white beans, dark chocolate, kidney beans, green vegetables, tomatoes. Those are just some examples that they gave for common foods that people have. Um, increasing your water intake so that's the other symptom I forgot to mention that I have I have had such dry skin super dry skin my hands my elbows my face I've been having like dry patches just super dry skin um, so they say really increasing your water make sure you're getting about 80 to 96 ounces in a day will be really helpful for the dry skin um, don't skip meals they say that um, having your different spikes in your blood sugar that just staying at like regular meals all throughout the day is a lot more helpful for people with these symptoms. Um, increasing your fiber. So fruits, vegetables, ones like broccoli, cauliflower, uh, Brussels sprouts, kale, those all have a really good um, fiber, whole grains, beans. And then um, other foods that I didn't mention in here was um, 
vegetable so other foods to add this so they say to eat lots of fruits and vegetables and then of course i'm going to add yogurt cheese herbal teas and a lot more whole grains so those are just some different ways that they say to relieve your symptoms naturally so we'll see how it goes um let me know down below in the description in the comment box you know i know a lot of you have told me you've been going through this yourself um, let me know if you're going to try any of these things. Um, I just really think it'll be super helpful. And I will definitely let you know every week how things are going in my weekly updates. I'll just let you know still how the scale's going, what kind of things I added to my diet, how the, all these supplements seem to be doing. Um, yep, I will kind of give you an update on all of that stuff. So that'll be what our weekly update is. That'll be up every Saturday. Um, we will um, kind of go through all of this and I'll just let you know how it's all going. So anyhow, not every one of my Vlogmas videos is going to be me sitting down talking for 30 minutes. So we will have vlogs and all that, plus my, all my regular content. Um, so you'll see this video tomorrow. You're going to see my grocery haul. We'll have a meal prep, all of the fun stuff. So um, I will probably before actually I even get on here, I'll just do the puzzle before I I think I said that I'll go do the puzzle next, but no, we're going to end the video now. You'll see the puzzle, how it came out. We're going to do this every day, opening up our little puzzles. So we'll see that thing come together. And I hope you guys are having a fabulous week and this is going up on the weekend. So have a fabulous weekend and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.